We are on day four of the Nautical Archaeology International Field School here at NMC and we've recruited students from all around the country to come and learn how to do the basic training in archaeological survey actually out in the water in Grand Traverse Bay here. I've opened my eyes to all of the great underwater cultural resources that, that you have here in the Great Lakes. Um, I just was not aware of the number of shipwrecks that were here uh, and the really interesting history that, that there is kind of surrounding this region uh, as far as shipping and it's very, very cool. It's not just about uh, what you see on TV, treasure hunting, or, or you know, the programs that have to do with going down and, and searching for things just for, just for a commercial gain. There's a whole lot of information that you can get out of a shipwreck or out of a submerged uh, coastal area or something about the history. Um, so much information. What a lot of people don't know is that um, artifacts are preserved better underwater than they are on land. And so it's a great resource for, uh, for archaeology. We have lots of interesting archaeological sites out in the bay. Everything from horse-drawn carriages to shipwrecks to steam locomotives to airplanes. Uh, we actually have a junk pile locally here. It's a little pile of cultural debris from the 1950s, which is really super interesting. We have old prehistoric land surfaces going back 10,000 years, still preserved out in the middle of the bay here. So lots of really interesting archaeological sites. I mean, there are a lot of uh, shipwrecks in the Great Lakes, and there is a, a lot in, uh, in the bay here as well. And it's really nice to be able to get out there and actually have a look at some. Um, there's one uh, that we've been dived on a couple of years ago when we were working here called the Elmwood. It's in about um, 10 to 15 feet, so it's not hugely deep. Uh, but it was very interesting this week on last Sunday we actually took a remotely operated vehicle uh, and lowered it over from a boat and were able to fly over the wreck. And it was uh, very interesting to see uh, the detail of it just from um, remote sensing and without having to put divers down. But it's actually fascinating the technology that is advancing really fast these days. I think one of the, the major uh, benefits is in things like uh, tourism. People are very inquisitive about their, their heritage and their cultural history and uh, the work that uh, comes out of these sort of exercises with the students um, can really go to um, broaden the, our knowledge base of our underwater cultural heritage in particular. But that's then to the benefit of everybody out there. For Michigan it's important because obviously with the Great Lakes you have a lot of submerged cultural resources, uh, a lot of wrecks that divers particularly are interested in. When you go and dive on a wreck, for example, you actually know a little bit about the history of it. Um, and you kind of know what you're looking at. It will support uh, local businesses. If you're bringing more people to the area uh, to learn about the wrecks that are in Traverse, uh, Traverse Bay and then the rest of Lake Michigan uh, and in the Great Lakes in general, if you're bringing a lot more people here to dive, um, and you're kind of raising awareness too. I mean, that's part of what we do. It's a connection with the shipping industry, uh, especially when you start to understand the history um, of the shipping industry, what kind of products were being shipped from one place to another. Uh, and you can understand that when you find a wreck, especially when it's an unknown wreck and you get a chance to survey it, you might be able to identify it, identify the cargo, identify where the ship came from, where it was going. And all of that helps to give kind of a more complete picture to, uh, to the history of, of trade in this region. If we haven't got the, the name of it, the record of it, or the bell with the name on or anything like that, it can be quite difficult and a real challenge for the students. But that's all part of the archaeological uh, investigating process. Obviously we're only interested in ships after they've sank to the bottom, but a lot of the skills that we use for surveying shipwrecks are the same skills they use in the shipping industry. An example of that would be like our sonar course. We use sonar as archaeologists to find things down in the water and obviously folks on ships use sonar for navigation, things like that. We are outside here today doing some survey practice uh, with some really great technology. We've got the total station uh, and these are the students here in the background doing some survey. And we're sort of practicing for when we actually go out and use these same techniques out in the water with diving. We've been teaching the students all sorts of aspects of archaeology uh, with a real strong slant to mar maritime archaeology. 
but we're also running specialist courses on things like remotely operated vehicles, how to view vessels and shipwrecks and things underwater without actually getting in the water yourself. Um, and we're also running things like uh, flint napping and uh, wooden ship and boat construction and documentary research, a whole gambit of uh, subjects we're covering. It's, a, it's a, pleasure, a pleasure and delight to actually come here. The campus here um, in Traverse City is absolutely fantastic. Um, I work all over the world, um, not just in Europe, and, but in, uh, you know, in, in anywhere I'm asked to go. And the facilities here, both the campus, the layouts, the, the buildings, are really almost second to none. I don't think I've, I could actually put my finger on anywhere that I'd prefer to go if I was a, a student these days in the subject. Um, and it's really interesting to come out and uh, see how it's applied here and how the students uh, react to it. Um, I think one of the benefits of me coming over myself um, from, a, from the UK um, is that they get a mix of uh, views which uh, can be quite opposing from uh, Europe to America Every country has its own rules and regulations and laws that apply to maritime archaeology. Um, and the style and the approach that uh, we have is you know, quite different. The basic skill that we're teaching is problem solving. The students have to go out in the field and survey an archaeological site and they have a lot of decision making. So it's taking a very complex problem, boiling it down to simple solutions and then applying those solutions. And that's a skill really you can use in any industry. NMC is the perfect place for this because we're actually located right on the shore of the lake here. We're investigating archaeological sites that have never been documented before. And they really fill in a piece of the history story that hasn't been known before. Uh, I would encourage anyone that has, a, has an interest in this to come and sign up for the class uh, and get involved in whatever way. You don't have to be a diver. There's a ton of land-based opportunities too. I would really encourage people to educate themselves about archaeology in general, nautical archaeology, but also to check out the class and, and, and get involved.